law, Fick was um, somebody who discovered that um, the rate of diffusion was proportional to a number of factors, three factors mainly. Um, and he, or she, I think it was a he, said um, that uh, the rate of diffusion is proportional, I'm going to run out of space, to, and then there's a really, really neat little equation that you can remember. And what I'll do is I'll um, write the equation down, but then also kind of draw a little picture to try and help you remember. So he, he said that um, it's surface area, and I'll just abbreviate that to SA, multiplied by um, difference in concentration of whatever it is that's diffusing, or the other way that you could say that is a concentration gradient, so we'll just write that down, a conch gradient, divided by the diffusion pathway. So the diffusion pathway is how far does the thing that's diffusing have to go. Yeah. So that means that um, this, these two that are sitting at the top of the equation, they have to be really, really massive in order to allow diffusion to happen as quickly as possible. And this one sitting on the bottom of the equation has to be really, really small in order to allow diffusion to be as quick as possible. Okay? So let's have, um, here we go, this is... Say this is um, a semi-permeable membrane. Yeah, we'll draw some little holes in it. And uh, on one side we've got a number of molecules that are that can go through this membrane, and on this side we've also got a number of molecules. Now at the moment there are a few more molecules on this side than there are on this side. Now diffusion says that molecules will diffuse from a, um, a high to a low gradient, a high to a low concentration. Um, so using this picture, this molecule, these molecules will want to diffuse from this side to that side. But they're going to be moving quite slowly because the concentration gradient isn't that large. There aren't very many molecules on this side. There are a few less molecules on that side but the gradient isn't huge. Yeah. So if they were going downhill, it would be a very small hill. Yeah. Whereas if you, let's just rub that out, if you added a few more on this side, you are increasing the difference between the number of molecules on this side and on this side, you're increasing the concentration gradient. So now if you were going downhill, it would be, you'd start off higher and you'd go down a very, very long, steep hill. Yeah? Um, so this means that this is one factor that is actually going to increase the rate of diffusion. You're increasing your concentration gradient, you're increasing your rate of diffusion. Now, there's something else that we could do to this diagram to increase the rate of diffusion, other than increase this concentration gradient, which is certainly going to increase the rate of diffusion. This membrane here that they've got to get across is, is quite thick. That means that the, the diffusion pathway is quite large. And according to Fick's law, the diffusion pathway has to be as small as possible to ensure efficient diffusion. So actually what we could do to this diagram is we could actually decrease the size of the membrane. So we've now decreased the diffusion pathway. So we've accounted for two factors in Fick's law. We've increased the concentration gradient, we've decreased the diffusion pathway. We could do one more thing. This is our exchange surface. This is the membrane across which the diffusion is taking place. We could increase the surface area so that there's more likelihood that these molecules or particles will make contact with the exchange surface and therefore be more likely to diffuse across. So let's just do that. We could just make it folded, for instance, like that. 
So remember, it's still, oops, it's still the same thickness, yeah. So the diffusion pathway is still small, but now look how much more surface we have for these molecules to diffuse across. So we could diffuse across there, and there, and there, there and so on. So we've increased the surface area. So this is a much better setup than the one we initially had. So this is going to make sure that diffusion is going to be very, very efficient. Uh, we've increased the surface area, we've increased the concentration gradient, we've decreased the diffusion pathway. And this concept can be applied to so many um, situations in biology. For instance, let's think about the gas exchange of the lungs, the mammalian lungs. Um, in order to uh, ensure efficient diffusion of oxygen from the alveoli into the, to the capillaries, we need to have a big surface area. That's achieved by having many small alveoli. That's our exchange surface. We want to make sure that the concentration gradient is as large as possible. So, that's achieved by constantly breathing in oxygen and then the oxygen diffusing across the wall of the alveoli. We want to also make sure that the diffusion pathway is as small as possible and that's achieved by the walls of the alveoli being only one cell thick and the walls of the capillaries of course where the oxygen has to diffuse across, they are only one cell thick also. Okay, so that's one example where the gas exchange surface of the lungs is adapted to ensure that diffusion is maximised, taking into account Fick's law. Think of another one. Um, again, in mammals, uh, in us, our digestive system, um, we want to ensure that we are absorbing as much of the products of digestion from the small intestines into the blood. Yeah? So, those products are diffusing across the wall of the small intestines into the bloodstream. How are we going to achieve a massive surface area? Well, it's a bit like here actually. Very, very folded wall of the small intestines. And each cell that makes up the wall of the small intestines is composed of a specialised structure like this. So we've got microvilli which are also increasing surface area. Okay, so that's increasing surface area of the exchange surface. What about the concentration gradient? Well, as soon as glucose, for instance, gets uh, absorbed, it gets taken away. Be that way around, isn't it? It's taken away. So the concentration gradient is maintained in that way. What about the diffusion pathway? Well, the wall of the small intestines, amazingly, is only one cell thick made up of these specialised epithelial cells. So that's another example. What else is there? Fish gills. I mean, this is again another gas, a gas exchange surface. So how is surface area maximised? Each fish gill has many filaments. Each filament has many lamellae. Vast, vast surface area for gas exchange to take place across. How is the concentration gradient maintained? The constant flow of um, water across the gills makes sure that oxygen is constantly being replenished and then being taken away on the other side in the blood capillaries by the, blood, um, by the red blood cells. What about the diffusion pathway? Well, the walls of the lamellae, the gas exchange surface, are only one cell thick. Sound familiar? That's like the alveoli walls are only one cell thick. And there are so many different applications too numerous to go into now.